I'm Aaron with Bowtie Treasures. So happy to be here again. We're continuing a project tonight that we started last night on Dixie Bell's Facebook page. And it's the Waterfall Antique Dresser. Actually, buffet. Let's get that right. As you pop in, say hi. I always like to know who's watching. And if you're a regular, that's always great to have you back. If you're new, let us know. I want to continue my project and uh, make sure that we make some good finishing touches on this thing it may not be the last steps I do on it but we'll get as far as we can so you can see um, this is progress this is where we are but you can see on the left side it's unfinished and part of that's because last night I painted that on the Dixie Bell Live and I didn't get to do these steps because it's still wet so I'd, I'd like to finish the whole left side tonight and then we'll look we'll sit back and we'll see what's left um, one of the things that's kind of miss, missing is my hardware I've ordered and I'm waiting for that to come in and if there's any colors in the hardware that I feel like the piece needs I'm gonna come back later and touch put some of that in there let's do a little bit of a show and tell because I, I've got some pictures I want to show you in case uh, I didn't get to show these the other night uh, last night so I'm gonna show you guys uh, the before pics and I'm gonna turn that on so this was the picture I actually took in the home where I bought it uh, at first glance, of course, it looked really nice, but always when you really start digging into a piece like this of this age, you find out there's more and more things like missing mirrors, not original hardware, uh, veneer that has a lot of issues that just can't be repaired and things like that. So uh, this was, uh, so this is after I got it home, you can see the top and um, basically just a different angle on the front left door. You can see it's, it's kind of cracked. Hopefully my internet's looking okay. I see there's a couple spots it's glitching, but let me know if there's an issue there. Here you can see, I'm just barely touching it, some of the veneers coming off. I wound up taking all of those decorative pieces off so I can get all the veneer off. The back was coming apart, and when I put it, I had to take this, the little wood, bottom part of the cabinet out so I could glue the back together and once I did that it didn't fit you know things expand and contract with heat and all that so uh, overall I had to fix that here you can see three different pictures on the left of me removing veneer from the bottom cabinets and the doors because I didn't have the mirror I removed the wood pieces that were holding the two missing mirrors there and then I wound up patching everything and then on the right just you can see the clamp on the right photo, you can see the clamp in the back holding the piece together. Um, so quite the adventure there. This is after I applied two Would You Bend molds on the back black splash. I do have the mirror for the center. And then I put two Would You Bend keyholes in the middle. But you can see all the veneer that I had removed. When you remove the veneer, you are exposing um, wood. It's not perfect. I did have some patching. And that's one reason I chose the painting technique I did to kind of hide some of the, the blemishes and things that I have. But uh, that, and then I, before this picture, I bossed it with gray boss. On the far left of this photo, I was gluing the, the left door. There, it was, you know, when things start grabbing and not sticking, people just keep forcing it and they start cracking it. So I was kind of touching up some glue. Um, that's what the clamp, and so this was, at the end of last night along the bottom you'll see that it has a little bit more highlights than the top part because i did not take the drop cloth all the way up last night after the live was over last night i went ahead and put in more drop cloth throughout so both the colors have been applied to majority of the piece so that's pretty much where i'm at right now and uh, big difference from where it started so we're making good progress and i'm happy to do that uh, just to reset or recap the blue color is a th three-part mix i use dixie bell's color lab to do that two parts stormy seas one part dixie blue and one part peacock and i'll that should eventually rotate across the bottom of the screen and then the two warm colors are burlap with drop cloth over that so that's kind of where we are. That's a little bit of the color palettes. And, uh, so I'm just gonna probably start out with just the flat medium. The flat medium is just a great size brush. 
that fits in the eight ounce container. So if you ever want, the mini kind of does, but over time that mini's not gonna fit in that container very well. So you'll see that I like to use, it's just a really good size brush. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a little bit of a mess since it's super dry. So on this uh, technique, um, you don't wanna, I, I don't want a ton of paint down. So I never put too much paint on my brush. I really just want to um, build it little by little. And it's okay to go left and right. And I also have told myself, I keep reminding myself if I need to, I'll bring out the original color that I mixed. We were having fun on Dixie Bells Live last night. At least I was enjoying seeing uh, people trying to ask suggestions for naming this blue color. And I had quite a few that came in. So that was kind of fun. Um, but yeah, if you've never mixed your own color, the Color Lab's really nice because it kind of takes a little bit of the guessing out of how you could possibly get to a color. If you don't know a lot about color theory, um, it helps you a little bit. And I really, one of the things I actually started with was I was using the, I started with the photo. So you can actually upload a photo and it'll give you, I think up to like 20 or 15 or 20 colors that might be close to the photo you have. So. And then sometimes what I'll do is when I use up the color in the brush, I'll drag over the blue color just to give it a little bit Oh, that was too much. Just to give it a little bit of, um, what do we call it? A dusting. I think I've used that word before. So if, like here, I don't really think I want that color to be right there. I might come back with the blue later on and just kind of drag over it. But overall, when I'm done, I really won't have a lot of the original color pure. So now I'm just kind of hitting the, repeating the same technique I did on the other side. More on the front, try to leave the middle open. Is going with someone I would call it a reverse vignette because the outer maybe not reverse just more of a cloudy outside than a dark outside I haven't ruled it out but I might I in the back of my mind I might come back with stormy seas and do some shading it's just one of those things that once I do it I got to do it on the whole piece and I haven't decided I want to do it yet so I'm it, it may be one of those things where I just say, let's sleep on it tomorrow. Look at it and say, okay, it still needs that one more thing. So you see how I'm dragging over the whole piece? That's, I'm just putting a dusting of color on there just to kind of tone down the color a little bit. Okay, so down below, just continuing the dragging. Call it dry brushing, call it weathering, whatever, whatever you want to call it. bring out that texture, that's the key. So you see how we have all this decorative elements. I wanna keep the darks. So this color is really just to hit the highlights. So I quickly go over this area, but what I'm doing is I'm leaving areas of the blue fairly untouched, maybe just a dusting of color. This has nail holes, cracked veneer, just a lot of craziness. And I mentioned last night in my live, sometimes I buy a piece, one, because I just don't come across them, and two, for the fun of trying something adventurous, really, right?
There are some areas, by the way, on here where I'll need to pull the drawers out. So I just need to, re usually it's just I have to remember to do it. But if you need a, a technique that's very forgiving, this one works really well because again, you're not super s concerned about every single stroke being perfect. So this is how I'm gonna do the top. Do you see how the, t uh, the right side has a little bit of a void in the middle. This is my attempt to do what I did on the front. So this little empty area, this is my empty area here. So that's kind of what I'm doing is keeping that vignette. So I just need to make sure I don't go all, I don't want to go all the way in the middle. You can use a, uh, a bigger brush. I, I thought you, if you wanted to, you could even you could try and use the Scarlet, but the Scarlet to me doesn't have enough volume to do what I'm trying to do. work on the backsplash. I really, I probably should look it up one day. I'm not exactly sure what this back section is called if it's not a backsplash, but if it was the kitchen, it'd be a backsplash. So I figured that's what it's called. If you guys know what it's called, let me know in the comments. I just call it backsplash. So you can see how I'm kind of just hitting the details. I thought the would you been molding was a nice touch just to kind of fill the void where two mirrors were. So we're, it's coming along uh, on this mirror, uh, the middle where there's not much happening. Just gonna put a couple more strokes in here. I'm just trying to vignette the weight. So overall, when you step back, there's this, the eyes drawn to the middle a little bit more. Let's put a couple more strokes right in here just to keep it balanced. Half the time, the secret is, if there is a secret, is to knowing when to stop. And I actually, I think last night I used a one inch, so I'm gonna use a one inch uh, brush for drop cloth. And remember, um, or a good reminder is, this is still a little tacky in some areas. I put it on pretty thin, but we're gonna go back down to where we left off so that we don't work in any areas that are wet. So earlier before the live, I mixed two, I combined two containers of drop cloth together, put a little water in there, soften it up. So, so I'm repeating the same technique that I did over there last night. And that is I'm just highlighting. One of the things I mentioned last night is I'm not, I'm not going to go all the way around to the back. Cause that, to me, it doesn't make sense to put a highlight underneath in the back. The highlight only needs to really be on the front. So I'm just hitting the front. So on the sides, a little shallow, but let's work on this on the side. In fact, let me bring you in and show you how I'm going to do the side. So you see how the, the grooves are going this way? You, you could go in line, but you, if you go opposite, you're just going to hit the highlights. See how that's working? 
Now I'm kind of going at a 45 degree angle. So I put it heavier here, but as I go towards the back, I don't have much paint on my brush anymore. And that's where it kind of looks like I'm fading it out. We'll do the same thing in the back. I could have not put anything back here and kept the highlights in the front, but I'm putting this color wherever pretty much I did buffet. And then right here, just a dusting. Light, light hand, like 5% pressure at most. The highlights. So I'm forcing the highlight on there. I still think I'm going to come back and touch that baby up. See how I'm going at an angle? That's going to help the brush hit those edges better. And the textures. Captivating. Captivating is the goal, right? All right, so let me come back now and you put too much on your brush, you're gonna have a bright spot, which I have my share of them, but you wanna keep those to a minimum. So like right there, I consider that a bright spot right there. I'm not sure if the camera's picking that up. So you find me kind of dragging my brush off a lot. If you need to discharge it onto a paper towel or something, that's fine too. Light hand, extreme angle. That's how you can do that dragging. Long, flat strokes, light hand, swooping it down, dust over, beautiful. Okay, so now we're going up. This is the non super glamorous side, right? This is a really cool piece. I mean, I'm not even sure that someone will actually use it for a buffet. You know, I'm not sure. I'd, I could see someone putting a TV on it, but I think it'd be kind of silly. I think it'd make a great display piece. I was in a hotel, hotel kind of resort over the weekend and they had like a small meeting room and I looked inside and there's really cool distressed old world kind of like server buffet. It wasn't nothing like this, but I'm like, this this piece I'm working on would look cool in just a like a conference room or a meeting space. So anyways, it's kind of, I just think it has a great character. It doesn't have to function like it was. That's sometimes I don't, that's why I don't always, I'm gonna do my best to repair all of the, I want everything to slide smooth and open easily, but Sometimes the piece just does not work out. And so when I sell a piece, I try to be very upfront saying, you know, it's had its years of use, it's not super smooth. You know, I'm gonna be upfront with them. So this is the, you can see here on the left, it's got the damage, but totally owning it. And how that's all working out. Um, even how the legs kind of have the layers, I think that's great. I would put this type of work in a category of extra or very custom. Um, furniture artist art would be a very good correct term to use only because it's not just one color and done. And I don't think that just one color is enough for this kind of situation because you, I want to bring out all the the, the details won't pop if you're just doing one color. That's what I'm trying to get to. Nothing wrong with that approach, but I just felt like in order for me to accomplish this piece correctly. So right now I'm doing more of a dusting, just highlight, nothing, not really putting a lot of prominent strokes right now. And hardly any paint is on my brush. I just want some depth and some highlights, a little bit of 
speckling, if you will, you can start seeing some of the grain and um, details coming out. I think it's cool. So flat, just really light, almost like, just, you know, an eighth inch of snow came through this, through the piece, just a little bit. So here's where the mirror is going to be. I'll still go ahead and put some there. Let the camera catch up. There we go. I think my mirror that is here, um, I'm trying to remember, I think it comes about right somewhere in there. So I'm going to put a little extra, a little extra right in here. Okay. Going back and forth to different angles does give it a little bit more texture and breaks up the, the unified, always going the same direction stroke, strokes. So sometimes you'll see me kind of going back and forth. All right, I'm just looking to see if I missed anything else. Let's put a little bit more highlight in the middle here. Keep the eye coming in towards the middle. And just looking at it, I think I got it all. Yay. I just need to fix that. I want to get this one little touch. I'm just going to do the same thing I'm doing with everything else. I'm just going to do a little bit of a... I don't want so much of that. There we go. Just, tone, just toning down some areas I don't want to be as prominent. I'm not painting it straight on. I'm just... Same technique I've been using. Just a slight drag. So I don't mind having some burlap there. Now keep in mind where I just touched, it will dry brighter than anything else. So I'll need to kind of probably do a little bit of a, a dusting over it. But the cool thing about this is you could use this color and come back and, and hit over something else. And, and it almost becomes a fourth color because every everywhere I put this color, I've toned it down. So as you're working, you could look at it and say, hey, why don't we use it to act as a fourth color? Well, it's been a few minutes. Thanks so much for joining me tonight. I'm really excited to, happy to join the community by letting you guys join in along the process with my work. Hey, if you're watching replay, let me know. Thanks so much for watching tonight. I'm Aaron, you're in the Bowtie Treasure Studio. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great weekend. Do something creative and be awesome out there. I'll see you guys later. That's the end of the show. Make sure you subscribe and ring the bell before you go. Bye.